Call the meeting to the, of the Public Safety Committee for the City of Hudson to order on Thursday, March 10th, 2016, the roll call. Alderperson Alms? Here. Alderperson Hall? Absent, and she is uh, no, no excuse that I'm aware of. Alderperson Morissette? Here. Number two, discussion, possible action on minutes of February 11th. Hmm. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Minutes are approved. <coughs> Number three, parking. Discussion and possible action to restrict parking on the north side of Vine Street between 10th Street and 11th Street and on 10th Street and 11th Street at Vine Street during the winter months. Chief Jensen, you said uh, Alderman Hall put it on the agenda, so I'm going to postpone this conversation until and if she shows up. Correct. This, this is something she requested at the last month's meeting, and then she called two weeks or a couple weeks before and asked that it be put on the agenda. So. Okay. Hi. Sorry, I'm I'll let her get settled. The number four, discussion, possible action to conduct the fourth annual YMCA Youth Triathlon on June 4th. 2016 at 1 p.m. beginning and ending at the YMCA. Again, this has actually turned out to be a pretty good event for the YMCA. Everything's done along the walking paths or the sidewalks um, with safety in mind. Uh, they do hire a police officer to be down near the front entrance off of Vine at Diamond there, their entrance, uh, just to keep an eye on the kids and traffic coming through. So there's been no issues with it. Move for approval then. Move for approval. Mm -hmm. Second. Or are you moving to approve? I'll move to approve. All right, and then I'll second. All right. <laughs> Any further discussion on that one? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Seeing none, it passes. Thank you. Number five, discussion, possible action to conduct the fourth annual Celebrate Difference 5K Run Walk on April 30th, 2016, 9 a.m. beginning and ending at Little River Elementary School. Again, this is a, a walk. They call it a run, but I don't think anybody's ever run it. It's more of a just to, to raise funds for their uh, special needs program at Willow River. Um, it runs the same route that um, they have another one that runs in the fall of the year for their music program, I believe. Um, they, cross, they start at Willow River. They cross 2nd Street. They Usually one of the PSLOs works at overtime, gets them across. They go down to Lakefront Park. They turn around. They come back. Been no issues. Cool. Move to approve. A, and I heard a second from Bill. Second, yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Oh. All opposed? Thank you. Number six, discussion, possible action to conduct the sixth annual walk MS on April 30th, 2016 at 11 a.m. beginning and ending at the Hudson Middle School. Again, another event that's been going on for a number of years. They, uh, they put up a lot of signage. Uh, the only time they cross the roadways is when they leave the middle school and they get onto the walking pass. Um, they stay to the, the roadways or off the roadways for the most part. They're on the walking pass or the sidewalks. Okay, move to approve. I'll second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> number seven is uh, postponed until next meeting. Now we'll move up to number three. Under parking, discussion, possible action to restrict parking on the north side of Vine Street between 10th Street and 11th Street and on the 10th Street and 11th Street at Vine Street during winter months. Joyce, I believe you yes. was asked to have this. Okay. Um, the Public Safety um, Committee was, uh, and Pat Casanova in particular, he was observing things, and he just felt that it was... Um, that when, when kids are sledding, that it's dangerous, especially when they're being picked up and, um, and dropped off. So um, he felt that there should be better sight lines. So this came from the park board? This came from the park board. Okay. Wait, yes. You said public safety. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not awake yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, from the park board. <clears throat> and um, uh, so anyway, so when... When, when the weather is good for sledding, then he felt that it, and, and the uh, park board agreed that it would be smart to restrict parking in that area. Because people are, from the sledders, are crossing Vine to mm -hmm. get into cars, is that what the? Yes. Okay. And are not, they not parking on the sides of the? Well, they can't cross Vine to, 
No, nine because the south side of mine is no parking, so they're parking on the side of the hill. What about ninth and tenth? Ninth and tenth is yeah, it's in between there. Why can't they park on that? They can park on ninth and tenth. Tenth and eleventh. No, ninth and tenth, or not ninth and tenth. Tenth and eleventh. Yeah, they're, that's wide open. They can park there, and they can even park on. I believe it's Cole Street on the backside. Um, so why they and they can park on Vine Street, but only on the north side, which is the same side of the street as the hill. Yeah, okay, so help me understand what the issue is there. Um, the um, gosh, let me take another look. I missed that meeting because I was. Uh, they changed the meeting to a different date, and I wasn't able to make it. Um, so there's parking all around that block ex <clears throat> right now, right. and they want to yes. restrict it to the front, which is on Vine Street. No, they want to restrict. They don't want any parking in front on um, Vine Street, that's what I'm and they want to restrict parking to the intersections on 10th and on 11th Street. Um, Mr. Gasno yeah. is citing sight lines and mm -hmm. people having a hard time seeing. Well, we can yellow stripe. Two well, car lengths in, in, in mm -hmm. but in the winter time you don't see the yellow strip. Um, taking a look at when we did that accident data, there hasn't been any accidents up in that area. On that, um, you know, I suppose we could restrict it, but then we're going to be impacting uh, 10th Street. That dead ends there off of Vine to the south. Yeah, there are a lot of people that don't have an you know, off-street parking, so if they want to have friends come over, most of them either park there on Vine Street or they park on 10th. So we'll be impacting those people if we end up putting that in there. Yeah. And again, I haven't seen any issues where we've had people hit, and I think it's better for the kids to get in and out of their cars on that side of Vine Street versus having to mm -hmm. right. you know, cross the streets or anything like mm -hmm. that. And it actually acts as like a barrier between the street and the kids on the sliding hill. Well, we can't really monitor it this year, I don't think. Knock on wood. No <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, too late for that. But, you know, maybe this is something to look towards. It, it, later for next year right mm -hmm. because i don't know if i don't know if we're solving an issue here we might be creating a bigger one okay right and the other thing is, is i think he's requested more lighting in the area yes so that might even help the situation some but again this is the first time i've heard of an issue of the sliding hill with parking and vine is wider or at that end correct yeah. mm -hmm. on again but you still can't park on the south side Right. Which would be the east which makes sense. of traffic, right? Has EMS ever had any incidents up there? Nothing other than recall. Just sledding related incidents on the hill. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, trees there. nothing vehicle related, nothing. <clears throat> just, no. Okay. So I think we should just monitor it and, and maybe keep this in the back of our mind for the upcoming winter season. And maybe we could address it at that point. Why don't we take another look at it in the fall just to put it on the calendar so that we don't forget about it mm -hmm. and then um, we can make some decisions. Right. That, we can or, take a look at it. Yeah, that way we know that we'll be watching it. So do we need formal action on that now? Lenny? Basically all you're doing is just we'll tabling it. it. Just tabling it. Later Why don't we just make a motion to do so? Okay, so make a motion to table it until October, would that be a good time to bring it back up? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll postpone till our October public safety meeting. Thank you. Number eight, discussion and possible action on safety concerns on Vine Street. I wanted to keep this on the agenda. I did ask Tom Sisko to come in. He could not make it. Obviously, he's not here. Um, but we can discuss further as we get into the planning uh, or the planning is done. So I know the last time we talked and we will have this on the agenda until the, the uh, project is complete. Mm -hmm. So we're aware of what's going on and address the issues for the, the general public that live around the area. But I know we had talked about uh, the solar yellow safety lights on 9th Street and the pushable buttons, crosswalks, painting the crosswalks, et cetera. Did we have anything else we talked about? I don't think so, but um, the reason that I asked to keep it on the agenda was to, um, Tom Zuli brought something up to my attention too, and he said, if we're going to do anything that, um, it, it would be best to have it in the plan so that it's done, because retrofitting is going to be. And that's why, yeah. And so, I was looking into traffic calming methods. 
Um, some, some of the, the residents, you know, what were the biggest complaints that the residents had? They were concerned about some of the kids uh, crossing. The kids crossing and but they were, you know, and, and so, um, so for, for speed, you know, if we wanted to incorporate some type of speed bumps into the, uh, oh. at the intersection, I know, I, I don't like that idea either, but um, if we were going to do something like that. If you think their house is rumble now, you should wait yeah. for a speed bump in or two. Okay. <laughs> well, if you're in an ambulance, it's a bad enough ride. You don't want right. to be going over a speed bump. <laughs> Public Works will fight that one because they have to plow. plow it speed oh, bumps. yeah, okay. And that would be difficult. Um, so <clears throat> I don't know what our... <laughs> Okay. Um, solutions are, but I know uh, there's some folks here that may want to uh, talk. Yeah, is, state your name and address for the record as well. And uh, uh, Todd Stonestrom, 800 Vine Street. Uh, maybe you could give me a little more clarification on the yellow solar. Well, what, what was, was brought up at our last meeting, Marty? If you want, we there are designs out there where it's solar, yellow flashing light, kind of like at Second and St. Croix Street, and we're looking to put maybe a push button. Well, I think what the, For the light to turn on when someone's crossing. I think there's a, um, a uh, interest to put um, crosswalk uh, flashing units in. Yeah. If you've been down to River Falls by the university, they have them. When somebody comes up, they push the button. They begin to flash to warn people, "Hey, there's somebody either in the crosswalk or about to enter the crosswalk." They then cross, and then after a small period of time, the light shut off. Oh, I'm so, familiar okay. with those, uh, and thanks for the clarification on the first piece. I think. Uh, I drive up and down Vine all the time. I live on it. I think the most important thing that I use is the sign when you come from the corner of Carmichael and Vine heading towards the Y, and it says 25, I think, and it's the, the speed radar the, gun. The speed radar thing. sign. Uh, I think I, everyone in front of me is slowing down, and so am I when I see that, because everyone is creeping up. Uh, so I guess. I was wondering what the consideration was around one of those type of signs as you come down the hill, because that's where most people are picking up speed is when they're coming down the hill, coming down from 9th down to 7th. So somewhere between 9th and 7th, probably more towards the 9th side, have something like that on the downside hill, because I think it's a great mechanism that people use and they, and they can see how fast they're going. Uh, so I know we'd brought that up and we had discussed that on not, I don't think it was the safety meetings, public but it works. came up in the public work meeting. So I guess that's something that I think a lot of us are interested in. Uh, and you are correct. I think, you know, the whole neighborhood is concerned about safety. I think speed is part of it. I think there's a lot of kids crossing to go to three different schools on the north side of Vine. Uh, and those are definitely concerns of ours. Uh, so. Hopefully, uh, as part of the plan, those things can be remedied. Thank you. I like that uh, idea of the radar sign. Anybody else want to speak to the issue? Catherine Cross, 708 Vine Street. Um, and when I did the survey on whether or not people would prefer parking or bike lanes, a couple of people mentioned sight lines on Vine Street that if the yellow paint went further from the corner so that people coming out of onto Vine from the cross streets would have a better sight line. So I thought I'd bring that to your attention. And also, my other traffic tamer partner and I really are going to keep an eye on the street and come back to the chief for the equipment as soon as it looks like maybe there's a week or two where we can get some data. Great. Thank you. Did you deputize them? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Told them they couldn't make traffic stops either. <laughs> I think they might if you would. <laughs> yeah, they probably would. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh. Yes, I'm Sharon Buffington, 708 Vine Street, and I'm really, really, gra I'm really, really glad that y you know that you're taking the time to address this issue, especially with all this going on on Vine Street. It seems really appropriate to do to do so, and um, uh, we like the idea. I want to second what Todd said about the the radar speed. That really has an impact, 
and as well as the flashing lights like they have in River Falls. Um, there is one point when we're coming down um, uh, Vine, uh, well, it's really, it really is just an issue to point up how important the sight lines are with the yellow paint. Um, because when we come down Locust and go to turn left by the uh, law office, those cars park very close to the corner next to the law office on, is this third out here? On third, it's very difficult to see. You have to pull way out in order to see. And so, um, again, the sight lines are very critical. You know, cars park too close to that corner, it's hard to see. So the same thing happens on, on Vine. So mm -hmm. just, just an idea. Thank Hi. you very much. Thank you. Marion. We, we have appointments for dogs that I never would be Hi, I'm Marian Weber, uh, 604 Grandview Drive, and I'd just like to bring the uh, question up again about the extension of Vine Street uh, in front of the church, so between 3rd and 4th Street. Um, I really would like to, for that to be reevaluated as far as the real cost, and uh, I know this subject came up at the very end of the city council meeting last time and wasn't really enough time to talk about it. But uh, that is an overall safety issue as far as emergency vehicles and had a lot of sightline conversations here. But just beyond that, there is no parking. So you have this, this jog in the road that happens between 3rd and 4th and 3rd and 2nd. And I just would like that to be looked at again. And, and I don't know if there isn't a cost that would come up for the neighbors there because there weren't any objections to moving the side, moving the curb yeah. over, but there were concerns about if there was enough room. And I think that could evaluate if some funding might be able to come up if there were sidewalk issues. Well, Marion, if I recall, the pastor of the church was not interested in that issue because of the cost incurred. Right. Po potential cost because of the sidewalks, and that's what I'm addressing, is there might be some funding that could come up to help offset that cost. Okay. And I'd really like for that to be looked at. I think it's a a current issue and it's a long-term what are you suggesting no parking or widening or no widening it widening the street and he was very much in favor of that because it would make the uh, curb closer to the sidewalk and and make it easier for people who are parking there to get out of the car and get to church okay. we can certainly discuss it um, and then uh, you know obviously we'd have to go back to public works as well right right integrated if anything I think the, the council did a final Ooh, that that came up in the last five minutes, and, and I would just say that it, this is a long-term solution to a, a problem that's probably going to pop up in the future, and I think thought it was a good con, uh, uh, recommendation when it was made, and I don't think we had enough time to really discuss it. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion on the Vine Street? We will continue to put this on our agenda, and we will get with the... Uh, Archit uh, the architect, the engineer, Tom Cisco, and, you know, give them our concerns. We'll get the minutes. Bill. Yeah, I have a question on the, where we were talking on, um, is it 9th we're talking about, the cross? 9th Street. 9th Street. That's where I, th I assumed it first started, 9th and I think you're talking about 9th, just for the simple fact is, is that you have to come up that hill and it's kind of a blind little intersection right there. slowing it down. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where they were thinking about putting those flashing lights. Would that open the door to potentially doing it like over by third, fourth, that uh, area over by the church? It's possible if, if they if they take forward. I know that River Falls, when they put them in after the new project over by the university, they've started popping up all over the place down there. And it, 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 I mean, it gets your attention. It's that, helpful, those right, lights, yeah. exactly. They yeah. light up, they let you know. And now's exactly the time to do it so we get the right. wires in the ground exactly. and go from there. Because right. so mm -hmm. that's the big cost and why we right. do it when it's all ripped up, it's time to do it. So do you want to make a recommendation that Public Works look at that or? Was yeah, I would make a recommendation that they take a look at how much signaling should happen throughout Vine with the construction? Well, Does I would, I would identify or? ninth and Vine, and then if you think third or fourth and Vine, but that fourth intersection of Vine is a, is a sensitive topic, and anytime you talk about it, you're going to raise some cane over it because of the stop signs in and out, in and out. Mm -hmm. And if we start putting more, 
I don't know if we start putting more signs up, if we're going to cause more of an issue there. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we, there's a stop sign at 3rd <clears throat> and Vine. But there are crosswalk but, uh, mm -hmm. guards on right. 4th Street to cross folks. Mm -hmm. The kids across, oh, correct. Okay. Right. They're in the school. <laughs> so, absolutely. Uh, let's entertain a, you know, a motion to have Public Works identify yeah, I think they should look at or recommend both our recommendation and identifying ninth and and Vine fourth. and third and Vine, which, whichever ones you want, you know, and then paint is cheap, yeah. so we can certainly put blocked uh, crosswalks in. I think they were going to be putting crosswalks in uh, those intersections when the painting was done. Yeah, um, when all the new roadway is done, I believe that was their their plan all along. Yeah. So, is that is obviously paint is cheap, but I think we have to take a look at. We're going to have them look at putting those flashing lights and we should have them work on that right now because yep. if you're mm -hmm. going to be running that power, you're going to want to run it now and by the streets. both Tom Zuli and Tom Sisko are aware of those suggestions from our uh, last meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. But we just got to make sure <clears throat> integrated into the pl finalized plans. Okay. Um, I wanted to, while you're talking, while you're talking about that, when I was talking about sight lines and, and calling mm -hmm. attention to what's happening on 3rd and Locust, um, I, I was thinking about 8th Street on Vine, that we have to have a sight line because people coming up 8th and having to pull out onto Vine Street have great difficulty if there's parking too close. And there's traffic coming over the hill on, from 9th. And uh, so just a thought that we've got a problem, not only at 9th, but also at 8th. So we would have to address the sight lines, probably the whole street length for safety reasons mm -hmm. you know if, if they're close yeah <clears throat> you can't see the paint in the summer or in the winter but right. in the summer we can get them used to that you can't park this far from the intersection mm -hmm. right i don't think you want to restrict parking in that area because a lot of those residents don't have driveways <laughs> but painting it down right. at least a car length so you right. have a sight line mm -hmm. visibility turning left up or even a parking, you know, no parking from here to curb. You know, I have one of those in front of my house, you know, yeah. where it kind of just brings it in a little bit more. I don't even know how many feet it is now. Typical, uh, what is the footage on that, Marty? Hmm? What is the typical footage on a sight line on the It's usually a car and a half length. Car and a half. Depends, hmm. depending on how far you want to do it. I think downtown there two car lengths at some of the intersections and I would I would for the record suggest that that is more than plenty for residents up there to park we're not taking that much away right mm -hmm. and the one thing is is that when they redo the painting up there we can just talk to Tom about just yeah. increasing the curbage the yellow painting around there make it a little bit longer yeah mm. so what I'm hearing is we recommend a motion to Public Works to identify or that we've identified ninth and vine Third and Vine. Fourth and Vine. The fourth of Vine to look at possibilities of, well, yellow flashing crossing lights and then one speed sign, radar coming, sign. Coming down the hill. Mm -hmm. Correct. Coming down the hill. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So ninth and Vine and fourth and Vine? I'm not sure what you want. Fourth and Vine. Well, that's a place where lots of kids are crossing. But you there's said a crossing there's, guard there. Yeah, but let's 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 have them look at it anyway, just to make sure. So we would we'll need to figure cost. out what the costs are and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Did I see a hand. I was just going to make the point that there's a school crossing guard there, and that's so that's perhaps need that point where there's traffic here, some different pedestrian traffic. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. So that's the motion. You get that, Melanie? <laughs> we did. <clears throat> also, the furthering of the yellow lines is yep. that part of this too. Yep. Okay. What about eighth and five? That'll be on what I suggested is that every intersection be looked at as far as sight lines. When they when they paint the yellow curbs later on in the year, we'll just tell them to extend it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. <laughs> Joyce, any further discussion? Anything to add? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. We'll recommend that the public works. All right. Thank you, folks.
Number nine, EMS Fire Department, Police Department updates. We'll start with Brandon, the EMS. Uh, nothing for EMS, but for um, emergency management, the new siren has been shipped. It should be installed before Tornado Awareness Week in April. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Marty. Um, Sam Wellborn started uh, the day after our last meeting, or the week before. So he's been on for coming on three weeks now. Uh, his brother, Charles, uh, accepted an offer and will be starting with us on March 30th. He's coming from Portage, Wisconsin. So we should be up to, um, full st we'll have the numbers of officers full strength. They won't be out on the street till sometime probably in June. We'll have all patrol officers out. We'll be able to reconfigure the police department again, get uh, night sergeant in there and then move the patrol level detective into his position. So hopefully within the next two months, two and a half months, we should be up to where we the plan was at the end of last year, so. Good. Just in time for the busy summer. Right, exactly. Um, Melanie and I and, and Lieutenant Willems have been working on the Lexapol project. Um, we had some training on that again. Uh, policies are coming out. In fact, we've got six policies that we just finished up. Uh, we'll be training the officers on how to get to those policy manuals. This is the program that I budgeted for last year that our policy manuals will be updated automatically through the system. So this will, a lot of our policies were 25 years old and so forth. So yeah, it was time to, to go to a different system. And then they'll be able to look them up on their, in their squad cars and so forth. Um, we did um, take on a new scheduling software, the same one that EMS has from a local company here in town. And it's web-based, so our officers will be able to check their schedules on a regular basis. If there's a change, they'll be able to see it on their phones. They'll get an alert notice if there's been a change. Um, we'll be able to, to push out a bunch of changes if we need them to come in and so forth. So we just started working on that, so we're kind of excited to get that up and running. So Is that directly tied to the payroll then? Um, no, it, it won't have an impact on payroll, but we there's so many things that this um, software can do. Uh, we haven't even scratched the surface of it yet. So I mean, the officers punch in through that? or uh, what, what we do is we'll sign them up, and they'll give us their... We'll have their email address, we'll have their cell phone numbers and so forth, and they, they can download a, an app on their phone. It's mm -hmm. free. Um, they can check their schedule. They'll get an alert the day before their schedule is supposed to start, what shift they're supposed to be working. If it's been changed, it'll notify them that they've been changed. So uh, it's, we it's can just send out. for scheduling, not in and out. No, no. This is a scheduling software. Because what we've been doing before is we've had an Excel spreadsheet, and we'd go through it. And then we'd have to change it and print up a new one. And then we'd change it again because somebody called in sick and put up a new one. We were going through so many trees, it wasn't even funny. So this way we won't even have to do it. And uh, I can give access to other departments such as the DA's office. So if they have to look up an officer to see if he's available for court, they don't have to call us and say, hey, is he going to be on vacation? They can just look it up themselves and take care of it. So, okay. Uh, and if our officers are on vacation or have to call in sick or want to go to a training, they can look at the schedule right at home and be able to do it. Or if somebody calls in sick and I'm at home, I can spring up my phone and go, all right, we're going to do this and this and this without having to come down to the police department and do it. So um, that's a new one we just started here about a week and a half ago. So uh, Jeff Willems is working on that one too, <laughs> keeping him busy. Otherwise, that's it. All righty. Number 10, any informational items? No? Anything for future agenda items? I have, I would like uh, us to look at, and along with public works, putting a sign over, so if you're facing County Market coming out where Taco Bell is, I think there needs to be signage above because people are still going straight when they're supposed to turn left or right. Okay. So if you, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I know what so you're talking many, about. So they're coming out a quick trip or, what, or whatever. and um, Or going the other way. So if you're facing the highway, they're coming straight when they shouldn't be in that line lane. See, so you're almost. So markings for those two lanes. Well, I'm looking for above, above. because you can't. Right. They're not the, the the arrows aren't identifiable in the winter. Right. Oh. People are getting in close. Well, I, I believe there's signs on the side of the road. Yeah, but people aren't. Yeah, they're not paying. Well, I've been on this clip four or five times. So it, it something needs to be. Right. In their face, all right. for safety issue wise. That's the one thing I have. Anybody else have anything? This is on the east west 
I think so, both ways. Or both ways. Yeah. It's a it's yeah. a north south. It's a Gateway Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. Taco Bell. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. And I know there's crash data there. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hanley and Carmichael is that still in public works? I believe they so. they have the surveys done. The engineering study is done. I think the recommendation from them has gone back to them. So okay. I don't know what they've done with it. Okay. I know he got all the crash data and he, he put some stuff together. So. Okay. Any further business? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you.